FY22 Earnings Conference Call of XTO Solutions Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Asha Gupta from EY LLP Investor Relations. Thank you and over to you, Ms. Gupta. Thank you, Margaret. Good morning to all participants in the call. Welcome to the Q4 and full year FY22 earnings call of XCO Solutions. The results and investor presentations have been already made to you and they are also available on the company's website. In case anyone does not have a copy of press release and presentation, please do write to us and we will be happy to send it to you all. Representing the management today, we have Mr. Ralph Kellison, Chairman and Non-Executive Director, Mr. Balaji Vishwanathan, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Desikan Narayanan, Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Balaji will start the call with brief overview of the quarter and year gone by, which will be followed by Mr. Desikan, who will be getting into detailed financials. After that, we will open the floor for Q&A session. As usual, I would like to remind you that anything that is mentioned in this call which gives any outlook for the future or which can be construed as forward-looking statement must be viewed in conjunction with the risk and uncertainties that we face. The risk and uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus filed with SEBI and subsequent annual report which you can find it on our website. Having said that, I now hand over the call to Mr. Balaji. Over, you to, over to you, sir. Thanks, Asha. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, thanks to all the investors and uh, interest parties who have been there, who are there in this call. Uh, excited to uh, announce our financial year 22 results and also the Q4 results. Uh, and as I mentioned in the press release as well, we have had a good uh, last 18 to 24 months uh, and we continue to see good traction from our business side. Uh, we have also had a lot of exciting uh, you know, results from a people front and the technology front as well. We signed new partnerships, we have uh, signed more than 20 plus new customers in this financial year. Uh, the revenue growth has been robust over the last uh, six quarters at least. And uh, you know, we continue to see uh, reasonably good demand, of course, you know, given the kind of uh, macro situation that we are seeing with the war and the recession and the possible deflation, trade hikes, some other stuff. Uh, uh, we are still being cautious in terms of what kind of investments we are making, but uh, uh, you know the, the situation looks, or the market uh, demand looks, uh, you know, quite robust uh, from the we are. Uh, <clears throat> we have had a reasonably good success with our automation first approach and uh, the concentrative approach that we have taken for the digital transformation, and that's what is driving or fueling our growth. Uh, this particular product. And we are also glad that we have been able to add uh, two new larger customers uh, with more than one million revenue and with uh, two customers who are with, with over five million revenue. Uh, if you recollect last year, we had only one customer with more than five million and uh, just about uh, eight to nine clients, uh, you know, with over one million revenue. Uh, <clears throat> there has been a lot of traction from a people perspective. We had a very good Great places to work survey uh, where our people actually rated us at uh, close to 75% uh, acceptance level and more than 85% uh, in terms of uh, uh, great places to work uh, acknowledgement for the kind of uh, response that we have been able to drive during the pandemic and uh, how we have been able to support uh, you know the team members considering that they are our primary assets. And uh, we have also focused a lot on uh, employee engagement, uh, diversity programs. I'm happy to tell you that we have actually onboarded a few uh, differently abled uh, people on technical roles uh, and who have been doing reasonably well as well. And uh, uh, we've seen recent success on uh, the online uh, upselling program and also on uh, <coughs> and also on the technical uh, engagement as well. Uh, compared to last year, we haven't really gone uh, you know, full 
team on the graduate hiring program uh, because last year was our first experiment and this year we are uh, trying to uh, take the learnings from that and making sure that we are making it more broad based rather than from one location per se. Uh, but uh, that's something which we are committed to uh, for uh, this year as well. So that's all I have as an introduction. Uh, you know, uh, it's been a reasonably good quarter, reasonably good financial year. And uh, we continue to, uh, we hope to continue uh, this possible trend. I, uh, this is Jaychik and I'll give a brief about what the performance is for the quarter. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, good to have a good performance during the quarter. Uh, it is in line with the market trend with the same set of uh, challenges across the industry. We are also seeing this, uh, catching the same. We'll walk you through the year-on-year -year performance and the quarter-on-quarter. -quarter. Uh, the financial year ended with a revenue of 400 crores compared to 300 crores uh, uh, around an increase of 34%. We did that close at 19.4% compared to 23% the previous uh, year. Uh, the revenue majorly came from Asia, which uh, has uh, did, a, did good during the year. On the cost side, so we had uh, uh, increase regular increase in the cost. Uh, specifically on the third party, we, did, we need to invest more on that because of the scenario, current scenario of uh, uh, a resource uh, thing. and also we had uh, cost in training and recruitment and uh, last but not least we had some uh, uh, expenses in merger. Those are the major uh, change from last year to this year. Our earning per share increase on 1% ended at 52.8 by 8. On the quarter on quarter the revenue grew by 7% to 113 uh, crores. A big uh, Raised from 15.7% uh, to 20%. Uh, reason for EBITDA increase is, of course, revenue increase. Plus, we had a foreign exchange uh, gain during the quarter of around 18 million compared to the loss of 16 million last quarter. And uh, we also had last quarter, we had some software purchase for the projects and some recruitment training costs. So all put together, we had a better quarter during the uh, better quarter. Uh, profit after tax ended at 15% uh, compared to the last quarter of 13%. Uh, percent. Uh, one update on the merger activity, it is still pending with the NCLT. Uh, they have, uh, the, the, uh, the court are in uh, summer vacation. Uh, this is something which is little dragging. So we are working with, working with the consultant to make sure that we can get our uh, uh, thing hearing coming. So that is the current state of things for the MCLT merger. That's it from me and we can open up for the question and answer. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and 1 at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Shrishti Jain from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Congrats on a brilliant set of numbers, sir. So I actually wanted to understand a little bit on the demand environment. Like you know, you elaborated in your opening remarks that uh, we are facing some geopolitical uh, issues in our dominant geographies. How do we see the demand environment panning out? And you know, in that same line, how do you see growth for us, the listed as well as the unlisted companies, doing, and even for the parent, uh, for the next few quarters also, and for the next you know couple of years, maybe FY24, FY25. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, we are closely monitoring the geopolitical situation, but we don't, uh, at least, you know, based on the war and uh, you know, the political situation, we don't see too much of an impact for us because we don't really have too much of exposure uh, either, uh, you know, in the Eastern European or uh, in um, Russia or Ukraine for that matter. Uh, but from, a, uh, uh, you know, but from an uh, economic situation, uh, you know, we are still uh, trying to see as to how we're going to span out uh, the higher inflation rates and 
UK and in the US and uh, you know we are seeing inflation in India as well uh, going up. So it, we need to still figure out as to how the demand is going to get impacted because of that. But uh, as of now, there are no signs of uh, uh, you know any slowing down or uh, any kind of impact uh, at this particular point of time, at least for the next two to three quarters. And uh, what what will happen over the next two to, uh, two to three quarters is what is going to be the indication for the next couple of years as well. Uh, so we are closely monitoring the situation, and that is also one of the reasons why. Uh, the third party or uh, the, uh, the contractor costs are uh, slightly higher as well for us. So we're trying to meet the demand that is currently there in the market, which is quite robust. And uh, for the group, uh, Ralph, uh, it would be good if you could, uh, you know, probably highlight. Yes. Thank you, Balaji. I can I could certainly do this. I think overall, we are, um, and I want to confirm this even, that pleased with the performance of um, the management team and um, with the accelerated growth that we have even seen in this business segment here. Uh, we even see a good growth momentum across all the different industry segments, um, across all our um, regions and, and geographies, uh, certainly impacted by um, some of the macro um, risks. So from a macro perspective, some of the risks that we are facing, um, certainly some of the uncertainties even then with the um, uh, war in, in the in the Ukraine as an organization as we don't have any operations in the Ukraine if I can then put on hold and terminate uh, business activities even there this Russian organization uh, and uh, especially in the more on the engineering side of our business uh, still a little bit the uncertain uh, situation uh, with uh, the pandemic in China and, and an impact even there of the global supply chain. Uh, but overall, as um, the majority of our activities are um, in the um, are aero auto transportation and energy segment uh, is more in the R and D um, segments, uh, and what we do in the other industries is even then more in digital transformation. Uh, we are still expecting to continue with a good growth momentum, as we can see that uh, all our customers um, are uh, investing in the change uh, of their own business model. Uh, even to, to even in, implement new business models and therefore we are even foreseeing quite a good growth momentum um, over the next couple of quarters and this is even underpinned I think, by the performance of the of the first quarter this year um, and that's probably even an outlook a little bit more from a from a group perspective. Uh, sure sir, thank you. Uh, sir, uh, you know, and the second question was on the attrition rate, you know, where is it currently and, you know, would we be expecting higher than normal wage hikes in uh, FY23 that, or CY22 and, you know, what kind of uh, margin levers would we anticipate to negate that impact? Yeah, the attrition rate continues to be uh, higher, uh, uh, you know, by our target has always been sub 20%. Uh, we are currently running at uh, close to 30% uh, in terms of our uh, attrition rate. And, uh, uh, you know, the attrition is certainly impacting, but it's not, uh, that's where, you know, the, uh, the objective of trying and getting uh, contractors and uh, the other models uh, in place to make sure that we are not losing the business uh, from a customer perspective. And uh, uh, on in terms of uh, wage hikes, uh, I would say that yeah, it, it will probably be still around the same as what we had last year, anywhere between uh, 14 to 15 percent overall uh, wage hikes is what it's likely to be. And as usual, the the the, the lower levels will have a significant 25 to 35 percent, and uh, the higher levels will probably see a slightly lower increase. But the overall uh, is going to be something similar to what it was last year. Uh, we don't really see uh, uh, just impacting the uh, the big data levels uh, significantly because we are trying to control our other costs, uh, including we had given up one of our, uh, our sites and moved to Kambatur and uh, at, a, at a slightly cheaper rate. So we're trying to look at all, uh, all the other costs and how we will optimize. But at the at the cross margin level, uh, you know, we may probably see a one or two percentage uh, drop because of uh, that. At the EBITDA level, we uh, will continue to be uh, focusing on that anywhere between 17 to 18 percent. Thank you, sir. I'll join back in the queue. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants, we would request you to please limit your questions to two at a time. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aman Vich from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, team. Uh, my first set of questions uh, are on the unlisted entity. If you can talk about the unaudited numbers like you have been talking uh, for both uh, Pune as well as uh, the Bangalore entity. Uh, the one thing I can say is that since it's unaudited, you mentioned we uh, want to make sure that it is audited and we have we can uh, publish it. That's that's the current thing. I can I can tell you one thing on the overall. If I look at the other unlisted entity, they are on the revenue side. They are doing better than what we have uh, we expected. And uh, the only thing is that little bit of uh, on the on the EBITDA side, they will be coming lower than what we have uh, what we projected for. But again, uh, that's again with, uh, in line with what uh, what we are also facing. So that I can tell you as a current uh, uh, current update about the unlisted company. Maybe once it is audited, then it will be easy because when we do the shareholders meeting, we will be sending a notice in which we will be publishing the data in there. It will be an audited data. And that will be more uh, uh, in line with uh, what we uh, what is. Uh, if you can talk about was the revenue growth uh, more than the listed entity or was it less than the listed entity? It, it the both combined together the unlisted uh, entities it will be less than the listed entity. We are expecting about uh, uh, around uh, about 300 crores. That's the uh, way we are looking at it. Uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been in the range of around, uh, you know, uh, 25 to 28 percent is what the growth rate is, while the listed entity growth rate is around 35 percent. Sure, sir. Uh, that helps. On the employee count, uh, so if you can talk about what the current number is, and also if you can divide uh, among the three entities, and just wanted some clarification. <clears throat> So the numbers we have uh, mentioned in the presentation is around 1700, uh, but my understanding is the number should be around 2100. So is the 400 people still on bench, not currently in project? So if you can uh, talk about these two things, the current employee number across the three entities, uh, if you can segregate, and why uh, the difference between 1700 and 2100 or more. See, the 1700 is only the, generally we put only the delivery folks, not including the subcontractors. So, uh, that if you put together, it will be around, uh, around 2000 is the number what we have in, uh, in the listed entity. It doesn't, it's only employees and the two in uh, delivery. Uh, so, you don't have the third party consultant added in that. So, uh, the number mentioned in the last call was 4,000, uh, 2,100 uh, in the uh, Chennai and then 900 in Pune and 1,100 uh, in Bangalore. If you can give the updated number for Q4. Uh, yeah, we have around 4,600 people in total and uh, uh, close to, uh, out of that, the the, uh, the build or uh, apart from the support head count, it will probably be around 4,300. And uh, the, the split is uh, uh, somewhat similar, close to uh, 2,000 employees in uh, 1950 or so in, in uh, Chennai and uh, a little over 1,000 in, uh, in the Bangalore engineering piece uh, and uh, close to 1,000 in, um, uh, in Pune as well. And the addition, sir, we are targeting for this year? Uh, uh, for uh, we, we should be having a net addition of at least 400 to 500 people. So far. Uh, sorry, you mentioned 100 to 500 people. Sorry, what is 100 to 500? Is it? Sorry, what numbers are no, you? No, 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 400 to 500. 400 to 500. Sorry, my voice was not clear. Uh, it's 400 to 500. 
ओके ओके बिकॉज अर्लियर इफ आई रिमेम्बर करेक्टली वी वर टारगेटिंग लाइक थाउजेंड एम्प्लॉयज एडिशन सो एनी रीजन फॉर गाइडेंस नो दट इंक्लूड्स द ट्रेनिंग एज वेल The thousand okay. employees that we were targeting was including the trainees as well. So on the trainee uh, account, not all of them would be billable right from day one. Okay, but uh, if we talk about like to like number, we are still maintaining that uh, thousand employees. Uh, yeah, and uh, if you can talk about the quarter and quarter growth we are expecting uh, for next two three quarters, is it still seven eight percent, or should we expect little lower uh, given little uh, headwinds in the economy? Uh, we don't see any reason why it should be lower than where it is uh, right now, but yeah, it should be anywhere between the six to seven percent is what our expectation is. But uh, of course, you know, quarter on quarter, uh, we are closely monitoring what the the demand situation is. Sure, sir. I have more questions. I will come back in the queue. Thank so. you. We would request participants to please limit your question to two at a time. The next question is from the line of Vinayak Mohta from Stallion Asset. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Congrats on a very good set of numbers. I broadly had a question regarding you know the combined entity. So uh, if I remember, so right now you have a broadly at a target of seven uh, hundred crores. Um, so at a twenty twenty five percent growth rate, uh, you would you know broadly be doing a one thousand crore revenue by FI twenty four, and uh, a pad of broadly one thirty to one uh, one thirty to one fifty crores. Uh, Is that a fair assumption to have given the uh, order wins or the demand environment that you have been witnessing, considering the situation that you know things might be a little uh, bumpy uh, in the near term, near to mid term, uh, given the situation overall? Yeah, uh, that that's our target as well. Uh, so uh, our objective is that we should cross the thousand crore mark within the next financial year. Um, next, I'll be next by twenty four, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so my second question would be: I just wanted to understand, you know, how would the uh, ERND grow out here? Because broadly, if I remember correctly, it's at a 150 crore run rate or something. So uh, where uh, and what would be the blended? You know, how do you see the margin trajectory going forward? Because uh, ERND automatically is a higher margin business. So how would the margin smooth in the next one to two years? Because right now we're at 17, 18 percent as your target for. So, just wanted to understand that trajectory and the growth in that business over the long term. Where do you see, you know, as a business mix, uh, be standing at? Also, uh, the understood company saw a good uh, growth in the year and the business. Uh, you know, in the last financial year, uh, close to around 45 to 50 percent, and all the other businesses put together was in that range of around 25 to 28 percent as what well, uh, the understood company's growth rate was in terms of revenue. Uh, The the challenge in terms of uh, talent is actually even more higher in, in that uh, segment of the business. Um, so that's obviously impacting the margin as well. Uh, what we used to consider as a higher high margin business also comes with a higher cost on our way. So the margins are still around the same as what the the traditional uh, tech businesses as of now at least. And uh, we think uh, you know uh, uh, while the demand was quite robust uh, right now. You know, we are also looking at how uh, it's going to span out, uh, particularly in the manufacturing industry and then the automobile industry uh, over the near term, because there is more demand on the on the digital side, even in the in the ER and the uh, business as well. So uh, we we expect that it will continue to grow at that 25 percent uh, year on year. Uh, but the margins are likely to be uh, uh, around the same as what our normal tech services businesses, at least in the near term. But in the longer term, it it should certainly get better. And uh, is there a twenty-five percent rise, or uh, did you say a higher number? Twenty-five, yeah. Twenty-five. Okay, understood. Understood. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations. um the second one question on the numbers origin numbers for the unlisted company uh when do you think they will be available and does it hinges on getting the approval from ncmp or it is a separate process uh sorry uh, rajesh uh, i could not hear it you were talking about ncmp uh, approval you are talking about or 
No, no, I'm asking about the audited numbers for the unlisted entities. Uh, by when will they be available? Uh, and is it related to the NCLT process or is it separately that you can actually share that number with the investors? Technically, we don't need to, is my view, that uh, we don't need to share the numbers of the unlisted company. But once the audit is over and it goes to the ROC, generally we file the ROC, then uh, it will be more a public uh, thing. But prior to that, we expect that once the shareholders meeting is uh, approval is given by NCLT, we will be, uh, the notice will have the unlisted numbers uh, financial. So that way, uh, we are expecting something somewhere around the uh, yeah. time frame to uh, publish it. So Rajesh, if the, the uh, NCLT and the audited results don't have anything to do with each other, uh, audit is going on right now and the audited results should be available uh, sometime in June because uh, there isn't really any time pressure like the listed companies uh, to complete the audit. Uh, and that will anyway be filed with ROC uh, as per the normal process. And uh, depending upon how soon we get the NCLT approval, uh, you know, it will be included in the the shareholders uh, meeting notification as well. Understood. Understood. That's helpful. And uh, basically you mentioned that there were major costs in this year. So can you quantify that number, please? Uh, which cost? Uh, sorry, the telephone line is little late. Which cost is it? Major related cost. You mentioned there were major related costs which were yeah, there in the financial year. Yeah, yeah, that's so relating to the, the professional fees, what we pay for the, the consultant who involved the banker and the auditor and the legal fees, those are the costs which I was mentioning about during the year. Right. I was just asking what is the number? What was the total number for the year? It's around, uh, whatever we think, around four, 41 million INR. 41 million INR. Okay. Yes. Okay. And uh, do you expect more costs like this to accrue in fiscal year 23 or majority of this is done in the last financial year? So majority is done in the last financial year. We will have some cost, uh, money from incremental cost will be coming, not much. So one thing will be there will be some stamp duty which will come, which uh, may be uh, coming once we uh, do the merger. That, that's the time the stamp cost will be coming. There is one major cost will be coming. Okay. And then my last question is just about the dividends. So we had uh, talked about coming up with the policy, etc. So any update on that side will be helpful. Yeah, so uh, we have published the dividend uh, policy, uh, Rajesh, and we are looking at, uh, you know, uh, like what I mentioned uh, in the last uh, uh, couple of uh, uh, calls as well. Yes, uh, we're looking at how do we utilize the cash. We did the small acquisition uh, recently, and uh, there are there is one more which is likely to come up as well. Uh, but uh, between now and uh, you know, the, uh, the the quarter one uh, AGM, we will decide on uh, what's the quantum uh, and how we are going to distribute uh, you know, cash. Okay, okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Picha from Multi Act. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. Sir, I wanted to understand that uh, right now roughly more than 45, uh, around 45% of our revenue comes from the Asia region. So, just wanted to understand our currency exposures in that market. So, uh, are our billings done in USD or is it like uh, in some other currency? Asia, you're talking about Asia, right? Sorry, Yes. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, Jessica. Asia is majorly Middle East, uh, uh, Middle East, Singapore and uh, India. Yeah. Not much. The one thing is there is that when we, if we look at, uh, we do billion dollars for uh, Middle East and uh, majorly it will be dollar in the Middle East and India it is INR. So that way we do have uh, EFC accounts where we have the dollar what we receive from the client. And if you look at the way we are uh, managing our bank accounts, whatever the proceeds, uh, proceeds come from the client, we keep it in the EFC account and uh, try to uh, pay all the expenses related to the, uh, the respective currency in that currency. 
so that we don't have any forex impact so something the local expenses what comes in is paid in that currency itself so that way the exposure is minimum and uh, with respect to since the us dollar is weakening against inr i see only a positive trend coming in uh, in this asia market okay so india, india india uh, inr so there is no exchange uh, risk yeah. there yeah and sir my second question on uh, was on the acquisition that we did so can you just speak about that like what uh, what capabilities have we got through that and what is the purchase consideration that we have paid for it and any uh, quantification of revenues that that entity might have we used the uh, uh, tech solutions that we acquired are actually specialists in data governance and analytics and uh, their primary uh, business is actually in the us uh so they uh, last year they did a revenue of uh, close to 3 million dollars and uh, uh, this year they are likely to do uh, close around 3.2 to 3.5 uh, is what our expectation is and uh, uh, now this will actually give us a really good hold on our own data practice as well because we have been focusing on uh, you know healthcare banking and other industries on how we could support uh the implementation testing and uh the uh, application integration or the uh, no api integrations particularly from a data perspective and that's what this is going to give us a capability for us we are already seeing some traction with our existing customers as well and uh, the partnership of uh, lucid tech with uh, the global platforms also gives us uh, an opportunity to cross the large services to uh, some of these large customers as well uh so uh, that that's the that's the basis with which uh we went ahead with the uh, transaction uh this can you want to add anything more so i i think that's uh, one of the thing which we have majorly bought is that uh, the the ip and the know how what they have which is which they are selling it as a license to the client that will be our entry point for any new clients and that's the way they have been uh, doing their business So that will have a good amount of clientele which will be coming in. So those are the things which we think that will have an added capability for us uh, from Lucid. Okay, as a question about as a as a question mentioned by Balaji, I think when you look at uh, the the R and D initiatives, when you look at the transformation initiatives in our in our target market, so I think it is. Always a domain specific part, but um, the two most significant enablers are always data and security, and therefore it was even important for us even to make an investment into this data-led capabilities. Okay, uh, thanks for the clarification, sir. Just if you can uh, specify the purchase consideration for this acquisition. Uh, so the purchase consideration consists of uh, you know uh, payment based on uh, what their current revenue is and the future revenue is. So we have, uh, uh, you know, the payout considerations run for at least another 15 more months, and uh, it's uh, it's to the tune of uh, uh, one time of the revenue uh, at this particular point of time, around three to three point two million dollars. Okay, thank you. And sir, my last question is on the salary hikes. Like uh, in the past, we have stated that normally our hikes happen in the month of January. So have we taken any hikes uh, in the last quarter? Yes, we yeah. have. uh okay and can you quantify how much that would be uh, it's more from a market trend because that something which we 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 make sure that it is in line with the benchmarking and uh, how the market is taking if, if it if you ask me it will be it is in line with the market trend is the one what we have done okay thank you thank you the next question is from the line of tushar from ratnabali securities Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Uh, so my first question is uh, regarding uh, like uh, COVID is descending now and the tra- traveling is opening back up. So uh, can you just explain how our margins can be affected in the near future? And my second question is regarding our employee workforce. So the data that we have, I have shows that our employee base has almost doubled in the last eighteen months. So could you please explain whether this is based on anticipatory demand and uh, what kind of 
uh, pressure can it have on the margin going forward? Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I didn't get your first question. What was the first question? Like, uh, uh, right now, I, uh, as other IT companies are also saying that traveling is opening back up. So, travel expenses which were being saved in the last two financial years, that should start coming back on our PL, right? So, can yeah. you just give an estimate on how uh, our future quarters might be showing in terms of other expenses? Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, it, it is likely to open up, but it's not that it's going to go back to what it used to be uh, in uh, 2019 or the first quarter of 2020. Uh, we don't see uh, the travel expenses impacting our margins, uh, at least in this quarter or next quarter. Uh, it's not going to be that significant uh, at this particular point of time. Uh, if you're seeing, you know, our, uh, because the travel is opening up, some of the on-site uh, deployments are also increasing. And, uh, so our on-site contribution of revenue has gone up from 32% to 36% uh, in this quarter. Uh, in terms of margin impact, uh, I don't see anything which is happening, at least uh, in the next couple of quarters. Uh, we'll keep a close watch on uh, our selling expenses, which is what is primarily uh, going to be driven by the strategy of travel. And on the, and on the employee count, uh, uh, yeah, we've almost uh, doubled in the last 18 months, and out of which, uh, close to around uh, uh, 350 to 400 are uh, through the trainee route. And uh, uh, you know, out of which, significant number of people have already been deployed in some projects or other. And we don't, uh, it was an anticipation of both future demand and also uh, you know, the, the, uh, the attrition that was picking up uh, at that particular point of time. And we will, we will do uh, something similar, but may not be to the same quantum uh, during the course of this year. Uh, but we are uh, trying to do it across all the entities rather than doing that only with the uh, uh, only with the uh, listed entity at this particular point. The margins uh, I had mentioned earlier as well are expectation is that we will continue to be in the EBITDA range of around 17 to 18 percent. And uh, we don't see any reason why we should think of anything lesser than that at this particular point of time. So it's not a guidance, but uh, we don't see any reason why we should think of anything less than that right now. Thank you. We would request uh, Tushar to rejoin the queue for follow-up question. Request participants to limit your question to two at a time. The next question is from the line of Rohit Balakrishnan from iThought PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Balaji. Uh, uh, congratulations on good numbers. Hi. Uh, uh, so, uh, Balaji, most of the questions are being answered. Uh, just, uh, I could not hear a couple of things properly. So first was on uh, just the bookkeeping numbers. On the unlisted entity, you said that uh, we have crossed 700 crores. I mean, I could not hear that number. So that's right. Just, okay. And, yes. and what would be the cash at consolidated level today? I mean, uh, in unlisted plus unlisted? Uh, listed, I can say it's around uh, 155 crores. Correct. Unlisted, I need to get you. I don't have it right in front of me. Okay, okay. I remember it was close to 300 crores at the time of, uh, close to uh, 300 crores at the time of an announced merger. So, uh, okay, sure. I'll, I'll probably get in touch with you to get that number, uh, separately. Uh, uh, so, uh, in terms of, uh, outlook, uh, Balaji for FY23, uh, uh, on the listed entity, you mentioned that we still can see 6-7% kind of quarter-on-quarter quarter growth uh, that you had alluded to in the past. What about the unlisted entities? What, uh, I mean, are we seeing similar kind of growth there? Uh, and uh, what what is the kind of outlook that you're looking at? Because I remember in one of the calls, you mentioned that probably the unlisted entities can grow much faster given the plan of the group and, and overall offshoring uh, uh, goals that we have as a group. So if you can just shed some light in it. So probably, Balaji, let me answer this question, and uh, I certainly do appreciate all the interest um, and, uh, in, in all the um, other business segments that we even have. Um, uh, there is, from today's perspective, no reason why even the other business segments um, should even um, have a lower growth rate uh, than what we have even here uh, in scope of this, of this call and the discussion and the numbers that are in front of you. 
it is certainly supported even then by the growth in the, um, from our perspective, so-called engineering segments are ever open and transportation. Uh, even then supported even by a, by a strong shift even into our centers and our activities in India. So I can certainly confirm uh, that we don't see any indicators why even the other uh, business segments uh, should grow at a, at a lower pace uh, than the numbers that you have in front of you here. Wonderful. That's, that's great to hear. And Balaji, one question on this, uh, on the list scope that we have, uh, we've added a lot of clients and also increased the million dollar and five million dollar client count. Uh, I mean, can you just share, I, I, you've been sharing in the past as well, but just maybe a bit more on what is really driving this growth. We have been really growing uh, very well and we continue to be very excited about it. So, I mean, is this largely driven by our own outreach in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, organically finding clients uh, versus support from the group? I'm talking only about the listed entity at this point of time. Yeah, it has all been primarily around the sales effort and the account management effort. Uh, so, uh, you know, both with existing customers and with the new customers. And, uh, you know, uh, like what I mentioned uh, in the last three, four quarters as well, our objective was to try and look at where the opportunities and try and grab this opportunity, even if it means, uh, you know, we have to stretch or uh, we have to make an investment. And that's what is actually driving most of, uh, you know, the growth at this particular point of time. And, uh, you know, it started showing results uh, over the last uh, four or five quarters. And we hope that it will continue to be in the same track. Okay. And just one last question before I run back to you. Was uh, this acquisition that you did? Uh, you mentioned it was. Uh, did you mention how much did you pay for it? Uh, I again sort of missed that. Too. So the total consideration, uh, you know, between the IP, uh, the assets, uh, the people, uh, and the businesses that they were transferring was, uh, you know, around little over their one year revenue. Uh, which was about around 3.2 million, but that's been paid over a period of uh, 18 months. Or so. Got it. So we have, I mean, we've not yet paid it out, but it's about 3.2, 3.5 million dollars. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. Correct. Okay. Got it. Uh, all the very best, Bharati and the team. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Thanks, Olga. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Dash from Sher Khan by BNP Pariba. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for giving me opportunity. Uh, I'll uh, uh, again uh, ask you on the cost side. Uh, so, employee cost has increased. That is one reason you mentioned that we right. Is there any other thing is involved uh, in that increase of employee cost? That is one. Second question on cost side is the other expenses as percentage of revenue declined uh, substantially uh, and uh, I know uh, there is absence of software purchase consideration, but uh, will it sustain, uh, this level will sustain in uh, uh, FY23, uh, this other expenses to revenue, total revenue, and our exit uh, margin is strong. Uh, why we are uh, guiding 17 to 18%, uh, what is the major headwind you see in FY23? Uh, just one, because of the first one, I could not uh, hear it properly. Can you repeat the first question you asked for? First question. Employee cost. I asked for the employee cost. It is increased 12% around quarter and quarter. One is uh, due to the high uh, wage hike. So what are other uh, components are there for the increase in the employee cost? Uh, is, is there any other thing? Yeah. Not much. It's uh, majorly it is uh, one is the increment and also the number of people increased from last quarter to this quarter also has contributed to uh, that increase. Other than that, I don't see any big increase. Uh, and with respect to the other cost, yeah, last quarter we had some cost which is uh, not uh, there in this in this quarter. But looking at the trend of the cost, there are certain costs which comes in uh, if you look at uh, the retention of employee, training and other activities which we do. Uh, these are the things which may have an impact on the overall uh, margin. So that is very difficult to kind of predict in the current market. If you look at our subcontract cost from last year to this year, a substantial increase because the market demand is completely changed. Now, uh, 
if you look at the current market requirement is that we need to look at how to retain people and also uh, also do the recruitment so these things are aspects which we can't define a certain cost as a cost which will be there so which is gets on fluctuating so that's the reason we give a we don't we must not give a guidance but just we are looking at a trend and saying that it will be in the range of the beta will be in the range of uh, uh, 17 to uh, 19% so that's the only thing other than that even the current uh, uh, the major cost is you know that it's a employee cost that having a little bit of uh, fluctuation due to the market change uh, that is something which we are putting it in there in our in our what we see as a trend in the future okay got it uh, my second question is on uh, your guidance uh, earlier you have given the guidance of evita margin for the combined entity would remain in the 15 to 17% post the merger now uh, your listed entity has done better than your uh, aspiration of 18% in fy22 and now you are saying that your uh, only state entity has some uh, impact on the evita margin so would you like to maintain that guidance or any uh, what is the outlook on your uh, margin guidance for the uh, combined entity so technically that is not a guidance because we are not supposed to we are just more uh, talking about a probable kind of a number in the declaration of yeah we don't uh, we don't expect any uh, any big change in that uh, I should say that's what I could continue to be the same it's not a guidance like what they can say we don't really give any guidance but that's what our expectations are okay your yeah, aspiration uh, uh, this last question uh, any last thing you have in uh, you have on uh, during this quarter because you mentioned that there are some large things in q3 and q4 so any large things you have on or anything in the pipeline uh so we don't really discuss our uh, client list uh, uh because there are confidentiality reasons but yeah, we we haven't really won anything in the last quarter but last year of course we won uh, two major customers uh, you know million plus and one uh, which was a 5 million plus and uh, we have a couple of them in the pipeline as well but uh, normally we don't really discuss our client list okay thank you so much for answering thank you thanks ashish thank you so much Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepan Shankar from Trustline PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, so, firstly, uh, can you throw some light on uh, these two uh, new customers added uh, during this quarter? Uh, I think you are asking about uh, uh, two customer above five million. What I want to say. So major customers are during the quarter is uh, two right so during the year uh, because so it's during the year two 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 uh, customers with uh, one one with more than five million and one with more than one million were added during the year not 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 during this quarter okay and, okay uh, uh, you know uh, we uh, we have actually covered the five million plus customer in the past as well it's one of the uh, Uh, it's one of our tech companies and uh, it's a global client, and whom we are servicing across multiple geographies as well. And uh, that account continues to grow with uh, the kind of capabilities and uh, the uh, the services that we are offering at this particular point of time. Okay, okay. And uh, what is the reason specifically for this digital slowing down uh, Q1 Q2 to four percent? growth uh, versus company growth of 7% q1 q it's a the digital is uh, not much drop it is more from a it's is a increase but the percentage if you look at it it's a very small uh, from 38.6% to 37.1% we are talking about a 1% uh, fluctuation in the quarter to quarter but uh, in on value wise it has increased so we don't see anything dropping there yeah but uh, the trend is not uh, reversing right so that's what we wanted to make it clear generally for the digital if you look at it the trend uh, has been raised from a uh, 26% to now we are in a uh, 38% range so we see that will uh, 
kind of maintained in this quarter and also will have a increase the ultimate uh, so we will yeah, that is the trend is not reversing in the month it is yeah. it is likely to only go northwards i don't see any reason why the trend is trend should reverse because the demand is still there in the market okay 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 and lastly what is the kind of uh, direct contribution from the group uh, for uh, full year uh that's in the range of 20% uh, of the uh, other again <laughs> the little bit of uh, the direct contribution of the group see what we mention uh, what i'm mentioning here is that uh the client which we have the group as a client is around the revenue is around 20% but contribution as such is more than 45% because the, there are regions where the group is contending the uh, the client and we also uh, we also signed with them directly so that way we have a support coming from the group for all the european uh, clients so that all put together it will be in the range of around uh, 45 to 50% okay 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 sir thank you and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of hitain jain from investco please go ahead yeah hi uh, so i have uh, few questions uh, so uh, so first is uh, when we look at your uh, revenue growth uh, trajectory um, we're just looking at uh, fourth quarter of uh, last financial year fourth quarter of fy21 first quarter of this financial year second quarter of this financial year you were reporting a 10% sequential growth uh, now you uh, come down to 6 to 7% kind of a growth and even when we uh, even when we look at uh, uh, headcount kegar so obviously in two years you kind of uh, doubled but your revenue kegar is lagging your headcount growth and even quarterly outcomes we are seeing this slow down from 10% to 6 to 7% uh, so so what is exactly happening here and is this that that 10% was unsustainable 6 to 7% this kind of that's a slow down from what you've been doing but your headcount growth was quite strong but in fact in this quarter your headcount is also just 2% up qoq So, is there a slowdown from uh, if you look at quarterly trends? No, there is no slowdown. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, see, the thing is that when you look at it last quarter, last four quarters back, the base was lower as well. If you look at the quantum of growth, it has always been more than that. Uh, so, you know, ten percent Q one Q between Q uh, four of twenty uh, twenty to the Q one of twenty twenty one. You know, if you look at the quantum, it's probably higher now. But since the base is higher, obviously the the, the percentage is uh, showing lower. So we don't see any uh, slowdown at all. And obviously, when the base becomes bigger, then the growth percentage also is likely to be in that range. Uh, and uh, from uh, the employee count versus revenue, as we had mentioned this last time as well, the reason is that we had actually hired close to around 350 to 400 trainees. last year in anticipation of growth and which is what you will see uh, those utilization of those resources and driving revenue over the next uh, few quarters as those trainees become available and uh, they start generating revenue as well so there is an anticipation and that was an investment that was made primarily because we found that uh, you know anyway our other costs are not in the same line as what used to be earlier during covid times and we thought that we use that We need to make sure that we are investing for our future. So uh, there is really no uh, reversing of time or a slowing down of any of those trends. And okay, uh, and this group business from group. Uh, so last year also it was twenty one percent of your total revenue from group direct. And this year also you have spelled out that number as twenty percent. And then you talk about this indirect exposure where group facilitates business in Europe, but Europe is your slowest growing geography today. It just grew 19 percent. Even if I look at mix of Europe, it was uh, 50, in fact two years back it was 59 percent of revenue. Today it is 51 percent of revenue. So isn't uh, shouldn't this group uh, be driving a higher uh, traction in your business? It is one because when uh, see. The, the biggest thing is that when, the, when all the other markets are growing at 35 percent, even to sustain at the same percentage, the group also has to grow at the 35 percent. So that's what has happened uh, uh, you know, in the last year as well. So uh, and despite being a slow growth market uh, uh, last year, and but right now 
Europe is actually seeing phenomenal amount of demand. Uh, may not be the, uh, uh, you know, if you look at UK, Ireland, uh, Germany, the demand is uh, certainly picking up uh, significantly. And uh, so, so if you want to look at where we are, growing at the 30% in the global growth market itself is what is existing. Uh, Ralph, you want to add anything more? When you even look at the relative performance, I think we are even then keeping the pace as you have described and confirmed it. On the other hand side, we see um, across the European markets definitely a good growth momentum, uh, but we even see there not only in the financial service and the insurance and banking industry, but even in other segments, uh, still even now uh, quite a tendency even to keep um, activities within the European Union. Uh, this is even something that should not be underestimated when, you, when we even look at our growth trajectory, and therefore we are, we are happy even that we can even continue with the same contribution to the growth that we can see in this entity here. Uh, yeah, Balaji, but even this year, like it just grew 19% uh, year on year, year of versus 34% for the total company. Yeah, that is because other companies are growing faster. I don't see any reason why 19% is certainly a reasonably good number of percentage of growth as yeah, but Bobby, let me let me try to clarify it again. We see the same growth rates when you look at it from a European perspective. But on all the growth in Europe is even then translated, even in the same way, even then into the into the growth even of this entity. As I said, yeah, we are even then see that we see a significant growth even in our centers that we even had within the European Union in Eastern Europe, and this is even where even then these centers are even contributing to our growth strategy. So not all the growth that we are generating, and there is no one-to-one -one correlation between the growth rate that we see in Europe and the increase of business activities for this entity. Sure. And another clarification uh, I just wanted to understand when we I look at your numbers. So the number of active customers has gone up from 68 to 100 year on year. Uh, but whereas your uh, 1 to 6 million is up just 10 to 11, and on the other hand, the half a million to one million is down from 17 to 16. So does this data tell that perhaps your client mining is uh, is not very active as compared to client hunting? No, it's, it's not actually. Once again, uh, you know, if you look at uh, you know, any benchmarks, the benchmarks that we track on is what is the revenue that's coming from existing customers and what's the revenue that's coming from new customers. If you look at what our trend has been in the past, we have been in the range of around 5% from new customers. And that's the uh, trend that we wanted to get to at least a 10%, which is what we have been able to do this year. So uh, the, it's not that the focus is not on existing customers. Otherwise, we, you can't make a 5 million customer in one year. Uh, so that's the reason why you have two 5 million customers uh, who, who have been mined and you know, grown as well. So Special focus on what the strategic accounts are and where we are going. So, and so your voice is not clear. Sorry. Your voice is not clear. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so th there is a there is a focus on both, and our objective was that you know we wanted to reverse the trend of new account growth from new account revenue from trend of around four five percent a couple of years back to at least a ten percent, which is something which we have been able to achieve this year, and. Uh, also, in terms of how we top customers' contribution are and how we are able to spread it. So, the nine customers uh, of more than 1 million last year to 11 this year is actually an indication of uh, how we have been able to mine the accounts and uh, grow as well. Having said that, if you are saying that we, have we done everything right, may not be. And that's the focus on how we how we can get everything uh, you know, going for us with our existing customers as well. So your top five customer last two quarters uh, has been very weak. In fact, this quarter your top five customer sent it down eight percent QOQ. Last quarter they were up just three percent QOQ. So is there some slowdown in your top five uh, clients? And and will it be fair to assume that uh, the group is one of those top five clients, or you don't, or how do you account for that? No, we don't account for group as a as a uh, in those uh, client lists. Uh, okay, and. Some of these could be seasonal, but we don't see any slowing down uh, with uh, any of our customers. And whatever we set as our target for the year, uh, you know, we are uh, we are actually in line with that, and uh, you know, we are trending uh, in the right direction uh, with all, 
all our customers at this critical point. Thank you. We'll take one last question, which is from the line of Anuch Sharma from M3 Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, and uh, congratulations, Balaji and team, for a good set of numbers. Um, I had one question on the group. Uh, so the group has uh, done some acquisition. Uh, one is A Systems Care. So what implications would it have on uh, our Indian operations, uh, both uh, the listed and the unlisted? And generally, what will be the strategy in terms of group's acquisition and our our benefits through it? Thank you. Yes, um, we had the um, acquisition of assistant care. Um, or even this business last or last science uh, business even then became part of our business activities and our portfolio at the beginning of the year. Uh, we see that we, with this exposition, continue to diversify even our engineering activities uh, in addition to transportation, automotive, and aero, um, so that we will there continue on the one hand side uh, with, the, with the current portfolio. And we will even bring our technology portfolio that is what is even represented by this Indian entities here closer to the and um, life science clients and um, it is not only then the acquisition that we have made um, with assisting care or in the life science business we even see that um, with the with the acquisition that we have done with ESL in this in this with the state and governance organization we will see that we continue to generate synergies uh, between all the um, different capabilities that we have in our portfolio. As we even see a significant part of the life science business will be, will be data driven going forward. All right. Uh, and just, just one small extension on that. So how long would you think it will take for the acquisition and the synergies to flow to the Indian entities or the Indian group? Thank you so much. So at the moment, we are, we are, we are integrating this um, um, life science business. It says today business activities in France, um, in Switzerland and in Belgium. So first uh, wave is definitely even in the first half this year to integrate it with our French business. And then from the second half, we will even then see how we can even bring the portfolio, our existing portfolio to the life science customers. And then from 2023, we will even then see on how we even then explore new opportunities in the market. And with these three ways that we have defined there, all between six and nine months, we will even see then the synergies probably more in 2023, but we will already start to see them probably in the in the last quarter of this year. All right. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thanks, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the questions. Uh, it was uh, quite interesting, and thanks for all your interest uh, shown in us and our results. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next investor call or before that, uh, hopefully we get the MCLT clearance, uh, you know, in the, in the call for the merger discussion as well. Thank you so much once again and stay safe. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. On behalf of XTO Solutions Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank <laughs> you.